A content analysis for an open-ended question might seem relatively straightforward, but I can assure you it is anything but straightforward. I will work with this example to show you how you might analyze a simple question like, what did you like about using the gizmo? Now, if you don't know what a gizmo is, it's an online tool for learning a mathematical or science, scientific concept. Okay, And so students used these gizmos or web-based learning tools and uh, they were asked, what do you like about using the gizmo? So the first thing we do is we transfer their, their answers uh, into a spreadsheet. And so here we have the ID, so that would be identify the student, so that'd be student one. We don't want to do that by name. This is the gizmo they used, and this is what they liked about it. And notice that there's a category and a subcategory. I'm going to categorize this data. At first, I don't quite know how to categorize it, so I will develop my my list as I go along, and it will take a little while, but I'll sort of get a concept of how I want to rate and categorize these comments. So let's begin here. We have ants on a slant, and the student says the graphics were good. It helped me to study. Now here we have our first problem because that's actually two comments, and I want to rate each of them, and so I, how do I do that? Well, what I do is I I'm in Excel right now, so I'm going to right click here and I'm going to insert, uh, I could do it that way, and insert a line, just a place for it. I'm going to highlight, so notice I just highlighted this, and I'm going to press Control C, and I can use right click there, and I'm just going to uh, paste that in there. So I essentially have the same comment over again. The next thing I do is I want to highlight the one that I'm actually going to rate. So I'm going to, the graphics were good. So that's in red. And then notice here, I double clicked on this and then I'm dragging over here. And you can't see there. Here, I'm just turning that to red. Okay. Let me do that again because we have the same situation here. We have the concept. What did they like? I like the concept of the site and the testing was fun. So let's insert a space here, and then I am going to highlight that, Control C, and I can press Control V. And what did they like? They liked the concept of the site, and I'm going to make that in red, and I'm going to highlight that. Okay, so there we go. And we have to do that for each of these, you can see, well, this one just says very easy to use, so I don't have to do that. We got to teach ourselves, and it's easier to do than real life. So those are two aspects. But let's go back to the original one. So we're going. I'm going to categorize these. So how am I going to do that? Well, the graphics were, were good. Um, I'm anticipating there's also sort of videos that they might like. Uh, there might be other... Uh, kinds of graphics, although I, those are the only two that I can think of. So I might use the category visual. So there's a visual things. I don't need that to be in bold. And uh, the subcategory might be graphics. And then here, it helped me to learn. Well, that's the gizmo, learn, so, or sorry, it helped me to study. So learn might be the major category and study, okay? Maybe there are different ways of helping to learn. I don't know what will come up. The concept of the site, I might call that a theme. And I don't really have a subcategory here. And then the testing, okay, so, testing. When you're being tested, I'm assuming when they were testing in there, you'd have to understand the ants on a slant uh, gizmo and that there's some testing. So I would just say assess. And there is no real subcategory here. All right. Now, the other thing you can do is rate 
whether it's positive or negative. So I could say rating. All right. And maybe let's just give that a different color. Uh, we will purple. And so the graphics were good. I would say that's a positive comment. So I might give that a one. It helped me to study. Um, I guess it's what they liked. Uh, so it's a positive. It's not neutral. So. Now, but the concept of the site, Now, I know they like the concept of the site, but it doesn't seem like a high rating. So I might just say that's neutral. I'm not expecting any negatives here because I asked them what they liked. And the testing was fun. Okay, so maybe I'll just put a one there. Okay, that's a possible way. And you don't have to put numerical ratings. I do sometimes because I notice sometimes there's stronger comments like for example very easy to use that's a qualifier uh, that might be usability and it's very easy to use so I might give that a two two would be my maximum rating here uh, and then here it helps with visual learners well uh, that might visual, it's sort of general, I guess, and maybe a one. All right, so that's how I might categorize and go through all my comments. But what I need to do, though, is clearly develop or articulate why I'm rating the way I am. So what I need to do is create a sheet in Word, and let me show you what that might look like. So here we are, it says coding scheme for student comments about web-based learning tools, which are gizmos. Uh, these are hands-on virtual manipulatives, not passive presentation of information, uh, often used with an exploration guide consisting of guided questions. Students can test their knowledge with five multiple choice questions that they can do at the beginning or the end of the program. That gives you the context. So what do I have here? Well, I have a general category. And here I am with my rating scheme. It's general, refers to general overall comment without reference to a specific, uh, to specific content or context. So I liked it, liked everything, liked nothing, didn't like anything. So that would be the criteria I'd use to assess that label. Uh, pace or length. So this would be a general comment about the pace of learning. And I'm giving some examples here. Quick, efficient, wasn't slow, made learning quicker. Or negative, too fast, too slow, too short, too long. Okay? And then here there's a special note. Note, if the comment refers to student control over a learning feature, I could not pause the web-based learning tool. Uh, uh, I used the control choice category, not this category. OK, so what you're doing is taking your thinking and putting it in here. So you develop the two simultaneously. You have the label. So let me see what I have down here. Ah, here's visual. The student mentions a visual feature of the web-based learning tool that helped inhibited their learning. Uh, this category is learning, so I guess that's interesting. So I might put... Uh, learning as the major category and then pace as the subcategory and it has to be connected to learning all right I have another category which is engagement and then I have subcategories here and then instructional wrap or the teaching strategies and then quality and then the subcategories so that's the categorical coding scheme that I used I even forgot that as I was creating a scheme so that took quite a while to do. And so here I might have to modify this. So maybe what I really, well, uh, it helped me to study the graphics were good. Well, that might be engagement and then that might be visual. Um, it depends in terms of the categories and you can see all of a sudden it starts to get a little subjective. And that's why you need to develop your labels here and you may have to redo them, that is a bit frustrating. And then you also simultaneously develop your coding scheme and start to fit things in and put things in examples. It takes a while to do, but it comes out 
pretty well if you just do it slowly. It does take a lot of time. So that's a content analysis with a simple open ended question like what did you like about using a gizmo or what were the benefits of using a gizmo?